So uh, can I ask one question actually here? So here we are uh, finding the median of n by 2 slopes. Okay, in the step 3 here. Why we have to find a median? Instead of the finding a median, if you take an arbitrary line and you uh, do the same thing actually, what will happen? Anybody can uh, say anything on this one? Uh, sir, we took median because in the proof uh, we can ensure that a constant fraction, here it was n by 4, uh, will be eliminated. Uh, after each step so in the recursion relation then we can guarantee the time complexity if we take a random point then that we cannot ensure yes so here we want to eliminate one fourth of the input from the uh, input actually from our set space and we want to do this searching in the remaining uh, three fourth of the input so to ensure that one fourth of the points are eliminated, so where do we take the median? Otherwise, we can do the same thing with arbitrary with respect to any line, but we cannot ensure this one fourth is uh, eliminated. So, if we cannot eliminate this, one, then we cannot uh, guarantee that linear time algorithm for this finding the upper bridge. So, this is the issue. Okay, so I think. Uh, most of you are not gone through this paper, I think. That is what I understood. Okay. So before starting the next algorithm, actually, and uh, Pawan Kumar, TK, I circulated uh, to you to fill a uh, some form. Okay. So what I'm thinking is, uh, since this in this course there are 105 students are there. Okay. And uh, taking YY is difficult for 105 students. So we will have only uh, mid-semester, end-semester, and presentation. OK, three things, mid, end-semester, and uh, some presentation. So I'm thinking of this weightage. And the, for the presentation, so, is it clear? So, this is the weightage uh, for this mid and semester presentation. And the presentation, I asked you to form a uh, groups of two, okay, on, on your own. And you have to fill this form by this Friday, okay. Fill the form this Friday. So that actually Saturday, Sunday, we will assign the topics to you. So that, see, nowadays, actually, a uh, lot of researchers are working on approximate algorithms for the computational geometry problems, geometric problems. So that topic I want to assign. So there is some lecture notes is there. Uh, it's not a printed one. Uh, this is not a published one. So I will assign. This is a book, a written book. It's not as a textbook as such, but it's not a research paper as such. So uh, somewhat easier to read. So I will assign the topics in, from that book in order. So that each one of you can present something and there will be a continuity will be there. And uh, okay, you will understand some concepts about approximate algorithms in, for the geometric uh, problems. Okay, so I'm thinking of you are starting the presentations on uh, two days. That is on Friday and Saturday. Friday during the class time, and Saturday uh, we will have an extra slot. Okay, 
maybe around two hours. So I'm thinking from the September 17. Okay. So this is Friday and September 18th. This is Saturday. We'll have a presentation from this one. Uh, of course, we have a uh, three weeks time at least. Okay. Yeah, one, two, three. Yeah, roughly four weeks time will be there so that there won't be any problem the first batch. So when is the mid semester exams? Anybody check that uh, mid semester schedule? It should Sir, be September 22, up around 22 or 23rd. I see. Okay, okay. Okay, we'll start here. So, we have a forming a group of two students. Each group get half an hour time. So, in one hour, we can cover two groups. And here, Saturday, and we have a four groups. And treat this as a part of this your uh, coursework, okay? And learn this approximate algorithms also for the geometric problems. And uh, roughly there will be a, a twenty-five or twenty-six uh, present hours, okay? So I may take uh, around uh, twenty-five classes, okay? So everything together actually less than 50 or 50 classes total. Okay. So that's what I'm thinking. And uh, I will ask few questions from this in the exam. Or see, I may take some viva also, okay, um, based on these presentations. Maybe I'm not sure actually, I'm not thought about it actually. So, uh, you know, in order to make you attend these uh, presentations, maybe I need to take some, why, why don't I not try to think about it, okay? I will see how this um, uh, can be included in the mid-semester and semester, we'll see, okay? So, this is the plan, okay? So, i asking everybody to uh, fill that Google form. By Monday, the assignment will be done so that the first uh, few groups will have enough time for the uh, preparation. So, any questions? Sir, do we need to know um, the before, like what other people have done before, before we can start our own work? See, that PDF file is there. Uh, that is actually the logical sequence only, okay? So you no need to know too much actually, okay? So basically there will be a one chapter, okay, covered by maybe uh, two, three or four groups sort of thing. So that's what I'm thinking, okay? So that will be done logically and, uh, okay, anyway, there is a some time will be there for the next group, okay? I think it's sufficient. It may not be required that much, uh, this thing, okay? So, uh, everybody has to prepare slides properly and uh, you have to spend half an hour time. Each group has to spend half an hour time. And if you prepare slides properly, then your presentation becomes easier and you can give a good presentation. If you don't spend enough time in the preparing these slides, then you cannot explain things properly in the presentation. Okay? And you will get less marks for the presentation and it is going to affect your grade. Because 30% of weightage is given for the presentation. Okay? So, I see, even if I ask you to prepare a, some a journal paper and give a presentation, Again, there will be a lot of unknown things will be there. 
So since I'm taking from a one book and continuity is there and it becomes easier for everybody, okay, and somewhat easier, even if something required to see what is happening before, one can go through that little bit and maybe uh, prepare for the presentation. So presenting from a, this book is much easier than presenting from a research paper. Okay. Okay. So if any more questions are there, Okay, so today we will discuss another algorithm for the convex hull, and this will be the last one about convex algorithm. So this is also output sense to algorithm by Timothy Chan. And this was published in 96. discrete computation geometry and here idea here is use dev and conquer and use trapping algorithms together okay so Let's all of you remember that uh, divide and conquer strategy and give trapping algorithm. Okay, there's no any uh, no introduction is required on this too. Okay, directly I'm going to the algorithm. So we have a two parameters here, m and h. H, it will see what is this actually. This is nothing but actually. Uh, size of uh, convex cell, output size. Of course, this is unknown factor, unknown parameter. M is another param, unknown parameter. So what we will do actually is in the first step, we have endpoints. So uh, let's assume that these points are uh, Endpoints are in arbitrary order, and we want to have an algorithm for the convex hull in n log h time, or sensed algorithm. Obviously, we cannot sort them, and uh, we have to take this arbitrary order. What we do actually, we divide these endpoints into groups of size m. Okay, so. Just simply if I take the first M points, okay, so each group, okay of size m at most m what we did we arbitrarily we are partitioning the points into groups of size m and we have n by m groups okay and second step what we will do is we find the convex cell for each group Each group by each subset. Then, since I use the subset, subset of points. Okay. Now, third step. What we'll do? Now you apply a gift wrapping algorithm.
So what is the gift wrapping algorithm is doing? So it finds the, uh, yeah, we basically we wrap this n by n uh, convex polygons. Okay, let's see. Okay, let, let's uh, uh, discuss once again. So we are partitioned these points into n by m groups. And the second step, we are computing the convex cell of each group. So convex cells are, because we partition the points arbitrary order, so these convex polygons may be overlapping. Okay, so we have n by m convex polygons. Agree? Yes, sir. Okay, the first two steps is clear to us. Yes, sir. Very simple, there's nothing. So in the third step, we are applying the gift wrapping algorithm on these convex polygons. Okay, so here in the gift wrapping algorithm, we used to start somewhere at the beginning of this, uh, somewhere one extreme point, and we compute the entire convex and come back to this where we started. So that's the gift wrapping algorithm. But in this algorithm, what we will do, we will find only H edges. So H is another parameter to this uh, function. So this function, okay, has a two parameters. One is M and H. These two are unknown. Assume that we are some M and H is given to us. Okay. So M is used for partitioning these points and we use the H here to find the H edges of the convex polygon. See, for example, gift wrapping, suppose if you start from the rightmost point here, so find the H edges. So this will be the first edge. Okay, and this will be the second one, and the third, and this is the fourth, okay, maybe fifth, sixth, okay, and this is seventh, then this is eight, nine, and this is ten. So we have a ten edges on the final convex cell, but we don't compute all ten. So we'll compute only H edges. If H is greater than 10, okay, H is greater than 10, actual size of convex cell, then we got the convex cell. Otherwise, H is greater than or equal to. H is less than the actual size of uh, convex cell, final output, okay, then what happens? We computed only part of the convex cell. Oh, got it? So here H, I am taking the H is the size of the final convex cell. We don't know this parameter. So is it clear to all of you? This algorithm? Yes, sir. So we have a two arbitrary parameters unknown parameters M and H. So we use the M to partition the points, given N points into groups of M, and we have N by M groups. And for each group or each subset, we find the convex cell. Then once we have this uh, N by M convex cell, these may be a overlapping convex polygons. Now we have to apply the gift wrapping algorithm around this convex cells. So we won't compute entire uh, convex cell, final convex cell, only we compute H number of edges. H is a given parameter to us. So if this parameter is greater than the actual size of the convex cell, final convex cell, or greater than or equal to, then we got the convex cell. Otherwise, we got a part of the final convex cell. This is the algorithm. Okay. Now, what is the complexity of this algorithm? The first step is the linear. We are arbitrarily making a partitioning. 
and second step so for each group we are computing the convex hull so what is the size of each group m so if you use any optimal algorithm like a divan conquer or uh, gram scan computing the e convex hull for each group is m log m okay and how many groups we have n by m groups so overall time complex the second step is order n log m okay now <coughs> come here now we are applying the gift wrapping algorithm so suppose if you start from the leftmost point how quickly we can find the next edge so if you look at the gift wrapping algorithm it is a linear time okay but here this algorithm we slightly modify it okay from this point we draw a tangents to each of this convex polygon okay so for example if i take a different color okay and this is one tangent and this is one tangent and this is another tangent so we have a n by m groups and we are drawing a one tangent n by m convex polygons and we are drawing a tangent from this point to each one of this convex polygon okay and we can find this tangent in logarithmic time log of size of the convex polygon so each convex polygon we computed using the m points so maximum size of the convex polygon is m so we find this tangent in logarithmic time and what is the algorithm for finding a tangent in logarithmic time uh you see when you are having a logarithmic time algorithm it is a binary search no alternative okay so either you have to use a binary search or fibonacci search okay you will get a longer than make time so when you are using a binary search we have to identify a middle element and we have to eliminate half of it from this edge space so if you can able to do it at each and every stage then you will get a longer than make time algorithm so i'm asking everybody to work out how we can find out this logarithmic algorithm basically you have to find out how we can eliminate half of it okay from the set space to get a logarithmic time okay see binary search all of you know i here also you have to use a binary search to get the logarithmic time assume that this algorithm is known to us now what we have we have n by m convex polygons and we have to find out a tangent to each one of them total time required to find all these tangent is this much and what we are doing we are taking the out of all these angles one which make the uh, largest angle or if you measure this way the smallest angle what are maybe one of them okay use the next edge on the convex hull so this can be found in linear time that is n by m time okay so time required to find a one edge is this much okay how many edges we have to find we have to find only which edges so overall time complexity of the third step 
finding the H convex hull edges is this much. So, order H times N by M. So overall time complex of this algorithm is this plus this together. So what is it? N log M. This is the first term. And in second term is H times of N by M. Everybody agreed with this complex analysis? Any queries here? Sir, can you do the second part again? Yeah, any more? No, no, sir. It'll be all. So algorithm is very simple. So given n points, you want to find a convex cell of these n points in n log h time. So what we did in the first step, we divide the points into arbitrary order. Okay, of size, each group size is m, and we were divided into n by m groups. Okay. And yes, second sir. step, we find the convex cell for each group. Okay, since there are uh, n by m groups, and each one of them takes a m log m time, so finding the convex cell of m points is m log n. If you use any divide and conquer method or a gram scan, which is, takes optimal time, m log m time. And we are finding yes, the convex cell for the n by m groups. And we are finding n by m convex polygons. So total complex of this step is n log m. Okay, that's the yes, second sir. step. So third step is, since these convex polygons are not a uh, non-overlapping, so they may be overlapping because we are not sorted or the points are, we are not taking any order. We are taking an arbitrary order. So these convex polygons may be overlapping. In the third step, we apply gift wrapping algorithm. Only difference here is, we won't compute the entire convex polygon. We compute only H edges. H is another parameter given to this algorithm. Okay. So, how to find out these H edges? So let's look at the how to find a one edge. Now, assume that we are starting our convex polygon construction from the leftmost point, this one. So from this yes, point, sir. yeah, don't say SR actually in between. Okay, let's finish. Um, let me finish, then you can ask if any questions are there. Okay. So from this uh, uh, leftmost point, you draw a tangent to each convex polygon. Of course, there are two convex, uh, two tang tangents are there, one a lower tangent, upper tangent. So we are looking at the lower tangent. So find a tangent from this point to each of the convex polygons. Lower tangent. What do you mean by lower tangent? Uh, yeah, we want to find lower tangent. So size of each Convex polygon is at most M 
and we can find out the one tangent in log m time. So how many tangents we need to find? We have a n by m convex polygons are there. We have to find a n by m tangents. Okay. So log m is time required to find a one tangent and we have to find a n by m tangents are there. And this is the time required to find a all the tangents from leftmost point. Out of all the tangents, we have to find a one edge which will be the next edge on the convex polygon. So how to find out if you take this line here and the tangent which makes the least angle is the next edge. So you find out that again linear time, linear in terms of n by m time. Okay, so time required to find a next edge is n by m times of log m. Okay, is it clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, how many uh, edges we have to find? We have to find only h edges. You are not finding entire convex polygon. Okay, we don't know what is the h value. We assume that h is given to us. Okay, this is the time required to find h edges. Now, if you combine this overall time complexity, okay, this is this plus this, that is equivalent to this one. Is that clear? Sir, can't we just keep applying this algorithm and stop when we have the entire convex cell with us? Am I missing see, something here? To, see, we have to get an analog H algorithm. Wait. Okay, that is our aim. So if you are, see, H is, we don't know the parameter. We don't know the size of the output. Okay, we'll see that actually, okay. Uh, so we don't know the value of m and h and we have to find these two values such that our overall time complex algorithm becomes n log h so that is the uh, trick here suppose in this complexity suppose m is equal to h is equal to output size size of the final convex cell then complexity becomes n log h. Yes? Yes, sir. But how are we planning to... I mean... ah, wait, wait, wait. We are not okay. gone to there, actually. Okay? Okay, okay? That is the next step. Okay, this is clear? Yes, sir. Any questions till now? Till now, algorithm is very simple. There's no any complexity anywhere. Very easy to implement. Okay. If you know the parameter M and H. And there's no any uh, complexity in the implementation. Very simple algorithm to implement. Compared to this, uh, what are the algorithm we discussed in the last class. Okay. Now, how to find this M and H. So we don't know. So what we will do? Yeah. See here, I just not missed actually. In the uh, in the fourth step, actually, we can say actually. See here, applying the gift wrapping algorithm to find H edges. Okay, so in the fourth step, what we'll do, we'll check whether these H, edge, H edges giving the complete convex cell or not. I mean, basically in the process where we started, we reached at the beginning or not. Okay, so if you are reaching that complete convex cell, we terminate this procedure. Okay. 
Okay. So we can check whether this, after finding HHS, we can decide whether this convex cell, whatever constructed, is complete or incomplete. Okay. That we can check. So that does not require any extra time. Okay. Agree? So that is the fourth step actually. Okay. Okay. Now, coming to how to find out this M and H. Now, this is also not very difficult. So we are to we try for various values so that our complex is within this bond. That's all. Okay. Algorithm is simple here. The final step. The for loop. So I'm calling this as a convex cell algorithm for okay. So let's call this a hull algorithm with this point P and M and H as a two parameters. Okay. Now, okay. So you find out this, call this function with P and M and H. Okay, where this M and H equal to minimum of two to the power of two to the power of P and N. So when T is equal to one, and M and H is equal to 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 1. That is 4. When T is equal to 2, and this is equal to, how much is this one? 16. Okay. And T is equal to 3. How much is this? Two fifty six. Okay, so like that, we increase the value of T and change the value of M and H and compute the convex hull. Okay, with different values of M and H. So after each iteration, you check whatever this value written by L that. Okay, list of edges we are whatever you got it from there. If it is complete or not, if it is incomplete, I means we could not find the we are finding only H edges, but that is not a complete convex cell. If it is a uh, incomplete, then go for the next iteration. Oh, not equal to incomplete means then then return actually. Okay. Not equal to incomplete means either it is complete one. Whatever you got it is a complete polygon. Complete final convex cell. Otherwise, you go for the next iteration. So this is the algorithm. See, don't worry about complexity. First, you see the algorithm, whether you understood the algorithm or not. Correctness of the algorithm. Any questions in the algorithm? So this would work for a, any increasing function in T, right? No, no, no. See, first of all, look at this algorithm, understand the algorithm, 
and whether you are getting correct output or not you verify it first once you convince that one we'll see okay uh, other questions will take up everybody agreed that this algorithm gives a correct output anybody saying no or anybody not understood this procedure see there is nothing in this algorithm it looks very simple the so both the procedures whatever discussed okay very simple nothing in this one yes clear Okay, now can you find out what is the time complex in this algorithm? Yeah, all of you take a piece of paper and see what is the time complex in this algorithm. Sir, I, I I think it would be n times something like two to the power of t, what whatever the maximum value of t is. before okay. we find out the hull okay just see actually what is this are we getting n log h algorithm or not right okay see that uh, complexity analysis here so here m and h is same okay so we are calling this procedure okay complex of this procedure is n log h okay and this procedure is called for parameter t and this h here is 2 to the power of 2 to the power of t agreed and if you simplify this this becomes n times 2 to the power of t okay and how many times this for loop is executed it is executed from t is equal to 1 to ceiling of log log h yes everybody can able to see that this for loop is executed only this many times when the t value becomes log log h okay what is the value of m and h 2 to the power of 2 to the power of t 2 to the power of 2 to the power of log log h and this is equal to h na and in fact it is greater than or equal to h Yes. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So, if you simplify this summation, and you will get n log h time. Any questions? algorithm is very simple 
analysis also simple there is nothing complicated in the analysis Yes. Sir, I was saying this this works for any increasing function in t, right? I mean, I can check for any value of t unless, I mean, as long as I'm I'm not getting the entire hull, um, it will just affect the complexity, right? No, yeah, you have to make sure that actually this summation. Is n log h uh -huh. right, which is the case for two to the two to the t, right? Yes. So if I go on and use something like two to the two to the like, like I use the power three times, yeah, and then that also, also I'll get see that also works. Okay. Then yeah. the idea is actually here uh, for what function actually it gives a better uh, constant or those things. We have to see that. Okay. Otherwise, okay. see. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you, yeah, it, it, you can have a something different function also, but idea is you have to make sure that the complex is n log h. Okay, okay so we are, we are like simply binary lifting till we get our answer, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and cool. complexity also not uh, too far from the n log h. That's what we are uh, care, taking care. That's all. Nothing else. Uh, okay. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Thanks. And beauty of this algorithm is this algorithm can be extended to 3D also. Same, use a dividend conquer and the gift wrapping. And you have to, tangent finding is slightly different in 3D. So in the case of tangent, is a two-dimensional tangent line. In the uh, 3D, it is a tangent plane. Okay, that step is slightly different. That also you can do it in logarithmic time. And you can keep this complex the same as n log h. So that is the beauty of this algorithm. Okay, so if I ask, uh, I request everybody go through this paper by Chimoti Chan, out, optimal output sense to convex algorithm in two dimension and three dimension, two and three dimension. Okay, so. Uh, if you are interested, you can look at other papers of Timothy Chan also. This person is actually is a very smart person, and all his algorithms looks very simple. And you will show that actually in the analysis, the efficient complexity, complex is efficient. So we hardly can find a uh, people which gives a very simple solutions and solve the problem optimally. Okay, he is one of them. So in any research area, you can find a few individual like him. The single digit you will find. Okay, so he is one of them. So you can look at other papers also. And with this, I'm uh, ending the class. If you have any questions. Okay, so tomorrow we'll start something uh, uh, something different, new problem. Uh, and uh, so all of you should feel that uh, your group information by this Friday. Saturday we are going to finalize and assign the topics. So if you don't do it, I will make arbitrary groups and I'll assign the topics. Okay, is that clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, See sir. you tomorrow.
sir 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 just uh, i i think to, using 2 to the power 2 to the power 2 to the power t uh, will will not work because it will um, like overshoot um, h after some point suppose like we have h or h value of 100 and we are using 3 times 2 to the power of t then we will start from 1 and then we'll go we'll go to 2 to the 2 to the 2 to the 1 and uh, if h is just greater than some uh, value of of this function then we'll overshoot it and we'll end up computing for like More, yeah, more, more edges. Okay, yeah, yeah. That good. Uh, so this right. is so, the only. Yeah. So yeah, you see, maybe that may not be two to the power of two to the power of two to the power of t like this. Maybe three levels up. Actually, maybe you can think of maybe something like this also. I don't know. Okay. Oh, sorry, not right. this way. Okay, three to the power of three to the power of t also works. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is the first. Yeah, something like this also works. Of course, one has to verify it. Okay, this also should work. The constant may be different. Okay, I will think on this two to the power two. I will let you know. After. Yeah, this also should work. Only thing is, this uh, base may be changes instead of two. It may become three. You can always you can uh, okay change it to by changing the constant there. That is what I feel. Okay, one has to verify this one. Okay. Right. Okay. See you tomorrow.